Hi, I'm Jason Harrelsons, and I want to welcome you to our new podcast, Rumors and Dreams. The inspiration for Rumors and Dreams came directly from my own life and my own experiences as a musician and a trumpet maker, and of course, uh, an inventor and a maker in general. Uh, I actually have made many different lines of products over the years, and all of them uh, have really stressed uh, you know, my uh, values, which include uh, high quality and a lot of care and dedication and love into everything that I make. So um, I've made a lot of different things over the years, from custom knives uh, to heirloom puzzles made from wood and metal and stone to uh, custom trumpets and accessories. And of course, being a professional musician for many years, uh, I strive for excellence and I really just want to see my vision come to life. And that has led to a lot of dreams, a lot of goals of mine, and a lot of rumors about me and who I am and, and how I've done uh, what I've done. Because uh, any of you who have created something for yourself, and hopefully that's everybody, and have put that out into the world, you have probably experienced uh, the shortcomings of maybe not reaching exactly what you had hoped to get to. You know, you, you've, you put everything in that you can and you find that you still strive to, to create more and to do better. And that's what a lot of artisans and craftspeople do, is uh, they work really, really hard to achieve the unattainable uh, dream. And at the same time, you've probably received a lot of criticism, and sometimes it's backhanded, and it, it comes out as rumors about you and your work. And uh, it's interesting because I feel like that side of how society perceives us and the different segments of our followers and our fans and our customers and our detractors, I think that has the potential to define uh, a lot of times our goals. And for me personally, um, I have sometimes been a little bit discouraged by things people have said about me personally, partially because uh, it, you know a lot of it just wasn't even true. And also because it's really unfortunate to see humanity stoop so low as to, to say some of the things that they, they've said about me. And of course you see it, people say things about politicians and actors and, uh, and people who have achieved lifelong goals. Uh, you see that all the time and it's unfortunate that as a society we accept that and we don't stand up and say hey You know, there's no reason to do that. You don't know those people um, uh, So the rumor side of it is I think a really really interesting place to Explore with people who have a passion for their craft and rumors and dreams the podcast is all about exploring what drives people what are their dreams and what have they overcome and experienced from um, from really their audience? Because at the end of the day, none of us really reach whatever it is that we see as success without a lot of trials and tribulations and oftentimes um, unnecessary um, you know, input and feedback from others. Uh, to give you an example, when I started building trumpets for a living, Pretty much everyone in my life told me I would really fail at this. It wasn't going to be something I could do for a living. And, uh, you know, I get where they're coming from because I was in college to pursue a career in trumpet performance. And, uh, you know, a lot of people told me I should go the education route because that's safer. And I'm not really a safe person. For me, I love to take risks, calculated risks, but I love to take them. And uh, you know those risks have led to a lot of broken bones, some concussions, uh, some very serious injuries, some uh, near financial disasters, and uh, that's part of life in my in my world. That's just how I do things. I love taking risks because it makes me feel alive. Um, I'm also the kind of person that loves to do really challenging physical things and uh, explore new places. So for me, that wasn't such a big deal. But when I was younger and I was in college, I actually dropped out of school to start building trumpets. And I'm certain there was not a single person that I knew in my, in my circle that supported that decision. And everyone was quick to tell me, that's probably not a good idea. Now with that said, even though I became successful doing that over a period of years and decades, 
Still to this day, people tell me I should stop because they think I don't do a good job. I hear it every day or I see it written on the internet. And that's, uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting time to live, right? Because we have all these social media influences and it's kind of a feedback loop if you pay attention to it. I personally don't pay attention to it as much as I used to. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, when people would write things on the forums, I'd think, well, how could you misunderstand what I was trying to get at? And I'd spend the time explaining, you know, what I was really going for was this. And then eventually I realized it didn't matter what I said. Those people are just people that are going to say negative things. And they're not even listening to my explanations because they didn't want to have a conversation. They wanted to dismiss my successes and my achievements. And it took me a long time to mature to realize that the majority of the people that do that are either one, very versed in what you're doing, and they're trying to give real feedback to help you, which I try to do that for others, uh, or they're just dismissing you because they either tried and failed or they never tried at all. And they might just be you know, a little ticked off to see other people succeeding at things that they never did. And I know that's a little bit dismissive, but it's not any more dismissive than the comments that makers and craftspeople and people with passion to succeed in their careers receive every single day. So rumors and dreams, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun because I see this going a lot of places. I know so many great musicians and I know most of the trumpet uh, makers and companies involved in trumpet uh, accessories. And if I don't know you, most of you have maybe heard of me and we can meet up, but also, I, you know, on my Instagram and Facebook and YouTube um, pages, I keep track of the numbers and we have like 30 or 40,000 makers and machinists and engineers and scientists who follow us, uh, or I should say follow me, follow my work on those venues. And I have met so many great people who had a vision and created a product. Uh, you know, it could be, uh, really any kind of product, but they're all creative things that these people are passionate about. And I would love to feature every one of those people who have inspired others and have followed their dreams and they've taken the risks and they've endured the rumors to achieve their dreams and their dreams are actually unattainable. So they're always striving for more. I want to, I want to sit down with each one of you and I want to hear your stories and ask you, what are the rumors that have infiltrated your, you know, your space and your mind? And what are the dreams that you've been trying to accomplish? And how have you balanced all of these challenges? And, uh, and you know, really hear the individual stories from the people that are creating amazing things. Now, the creators could be anybody, really. So in my little world, it's a lot of trumpet players. It's a lot of people who make handcrafted and also machines and just a lot of different uh, approaches to forming and making things. But most of the makers are combining their handwork and their imagination with machinery and, and everything else. So they use almost everything at their disposal, just like I do. And uh, that's why we connect so well. So for instance, uh, some of the people I know are very high-end engravers who engrave things like Rolex watches or Tiffany jewelry or um, you know, maybe not a Rolex watch, maybe it's like the very top end watch that's just a one of one ever made. Um, or people who are jewelers who have just pushed the limit so far and they've incorporated so many new techniques and the creativity is just through the roof. Or maybe they are performers uh, and performers could be anyone. In my mind, a performer is anyone who is using their body to achieve something that's, uh, that's physical. So that could be an F1 Formula One racer, right? Or for me, I really love downhill skiing and I've always wanted to be a slalom racer even though I've had too many injuries most likely and I'm older. Um, I, for me, that would be just a lifelong dream is to be a downhill slalom racer. And that's what I wanted to do when I was younger, one of my dreams. So, you know, hearing from a professional ski racer uh, or maybe a backcountry um, freestyle uh, skier, or maybe uh, you know, in performance, it could be an actor or an actress, someone who has really just all the passion to create uh, the moment within film, uh, or maybe it's photography. Um, 
or dance. There's so many different things that could come into here. And all of those people share what I have, what I've experienced, and what our whole community has experienced, uh, these rumors and dreams. And, you know, the struggle between making it and breaking it and creating something that you think is just so beautiful and amazing and dealing with all the people that one, love it, and all the other people that maybe hate it. And we don't explore this enough and see what influences they have. I mean, it could be that the reason, uh, you know, somebody who really achieved a lot of success in film, that maybe the reason that they really succeeded so well is because their grandmother or their grandfather um, influenced them in such a way that they found a way to navigate people and situations and come out uh, on the top. And hearing all these insights of how people got through it. Some people I know, they just keep their head down and they finish the project and then they release it. And whatever the public thinks, they just move on to the next thing. Um, others, they take a lot of feedback in and they try to improve the process and become better. And you know, there's no right answer. There's no better way. We each have our own way of achieving the dreams that we're passionate about. And that's what Rumors and Dreams is all about. So this very first episode, or I guess video, it's an introduction, I want to put out there that I will be at the International Trumpet Guild Conference uh, in Anaheim at the end of this month. And I am welcoming everyone in the trumpet industry and the music industry, anyone who's going to be there, to contact me and uh, discuss uh, some questions we can go through and have an interview for our podcast. Now, I already have some people lined up. And I have a long list of people that I know want to be a part of this. But since I'm going to the ITG here in just a few weeks, I want to get this video out there. If you know someone who you think would really love to be interviewed, and of course, along with that, featured, you know, because I'll take photos. I'll take photos of your products or your performance. Um, and I will write up a blog. And all of this is simply to promote you and to share with the public your story, because a lot of times, your story is never told. It may be told in news uh, articles or like I was featured on PBS one time and they did a national series that was called Arts, Arts, I'm sorry, PBS. I don't remember the name of it, but it, it was an arts thing where they, they featured things in the arts. And uh, they came into the shop and they filmed and they did all this, uh, these interviews. But in reality, it wasn't the type of situation where I could freely speak about the the challenging side of it outside of the physical challenges and when you watch that pbs special i always think to myself well that's nice it looks like a nice portrayal of me but uh, at the same time it'd be nice to hear more and to understand you know what uh what insider information maybe shaped my life and for instance for me personally um, i was born with some birth defects and so it looks like I'm just an ordinary person and I feel like I'm an ordinary person most of the time but in reality I had decades of my life where I was having strokes and heart attacks regularly and because of that I would have memory loss I'd have um, loss of mobility of one or both sides of my body and uh, it was very very challenging I had to learn to keep a lot of notes so that I could go back and pick up where I left off after a stroke and, uh, you know, at some point I eventually lost most of my memory from the time I was 37 and younger. And because of that, I had to kind of reinvent who I was. So for me, my birthday feels a little bit like uh, May 11th in 2012, because that was the day I woke up from that stroke. And uh, most people who know me and see me from the outside, they would never guess that I had this disability my whole life. But I was born with a massive hole in my heart and with only one carotid artery. And that makes the story of me and what I do and why I do it a little more complicated. And once you get to know me, you know, which you'll get to see in these interviews because I'll have some reverse interviews where people interview me as well. Once you get to know me, you'll start, it'll start to make sense how and why things happen in my life. And uh, for people who have heard rumors about me, the rumors might make sense in context of my actual story instead of just being a little bit of information. So I believe everyone out there has a story and you have influences and you've had serious challenges and trials and sometimes they're internal, sometimes they're external. We want to hear that stuff. and We want to know 
what makes each of you tick so that your passion um, you know, can be shared with the world. And it doesn't mean that you're happy because you're successful. It doesn't mean that um, you love everything in life because you're successful. Success is measured in many different ways. But uh, you know, a lot of the, the, the very best artisans and musicians and artists and craftspeople that I know, a lot of them are discontent one way or another. They may love a lot of things about life, but they're always trying to do better and change things. And it's not always about their art or their craft. A lot of times it's just normal life and we wanna hear that stuff. So join me for Rumors and Dreams. It'll be, I'm guessing, about a month before I have the first episode completely edited. And um, if you have recommendations or suggestions for who might wanna be interviewed on Rumors and Dreams, I foresee this uh, being something that I do for many years and we'll have regular uh, interviews coming out probably weekly uh, for the foreseeable future. So um, if you can think of anyone or yourself that would like to be interviewed, let me know. And if you're going to be at the ITG conference and you'd like to be a part of this, let me know. If you have a product or service there and you want it to be featured on the Rumors and Dreams page, and on my YouTube channel uh, and on the podcast, which will go on Spotify and all the networks, um, then I'm happy to do that. If you're a direct competitor to me, competitor to me, then I'm happy to interview you. And we don't, we definitely aren't going to be talking about, uh, you know, our competitiveness unless, of course, you want that question in there. You want to talk about it. I'm happy to talk about it because, for me personally, I love sharing everything and I love seeing people do what I do. And I have the utmost respect for every single person who's involved in the trumpet world because it's a very, very difficult instrument for most people. And it's also very difficult as a maker and an accessory and mouthpiece and, uh, you know, a supplier for those other peripheral uh, items, including music and everything else. It's difficult for those people to understand trumpet players as well because trumpet players can be, not all of you, but a lot of trumpet players, a lot of us, can be difficult people. We tend to be very focused on our goals and we're not always the easiest people to have a conversation with that isn't extremely biased towards your own personal experiences. And that's the difficult part of being a trumpet builder, actually. Uh, Designing and building trumpets is challenging because every one of you comes to me from a different place. And uh, and that can be, uh, you know, there can be a lot of expectations for me to please and help you succeed. And I know that uh, that's true with all the other trumpet makers, you know. So if you're a direct competitor to me, I would love to interview you and we'll do it the exact same as with anyone else. I just wanna hear your passion, know what, um, you know, what really is on your mind and what has inspired you to create and to uh, work with so many other people. So I hope that in the trumpet community anyhow, I can literally eventually get through every single person that is contributing. Um, In terms of an actual physical instrument or accessory um, or someone who's bringing trumpet players together and of course the performers that are bringing people together. I, I obviously can't interview every performer but I would love to hear your story. So. Um, Thank you for listening and for watching. You can contact me at harrelsontrumpets at gmail.com or you can go to my website, whyharrelson.com and there's a contact page there. Uh, Or you can call me, Um, you'll get Christine because I don't take direct calls, which should be obvious. Uh, But you can get Christine and I will give you a call back. My number is 303-657-2747. I can't wait to hear your stories and I can't wait to share them with the world and uh, you know, just bring us all closer together. Thank you, I'll see you in the very first episode.